Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig, and what we're going to talk about is Game Maker's new update for October 2025. I've got a few things running in the background, so I apologize if you can hear those, but I finally just saw this update and it is a doozy, so I wanted to make sure to get this out right away. So, when you first open up this new Game Maker, the first thing you're going to find out is that they have added a welcome tab over here. So I think this is a fantastic addition. Uh, right away when you start up, you're gonna notice several things. So you have the welcome tab here, kind of just walks you through. If you've been using Game Maker for a while, okay, no problem. Uh, you already know pretty much all of this and you can just close right out of the tab. But the nice new thing also is when you make new projects, the asset browser over here is going to just have room one. I've got a few more because I've been playing around but it's only going to have room one that's it it doesn't have any of the extra folders groups there's nothing else there to clutter up the asset browser which i think is such a smart thing i've done quite a bit of teaching for new students uh both on the younger and a little bit older side and when there are you know tons of groups in here with the sprites notes fonts all of that it gets kind of confusing and it's really easy when you don't know what you're doing to move things around accidentally and then just get them lost. So removing those I think is great. And then just making sure we teach, well, that we do and when I teach how to organize stuff. That way you don't end up with just a thousand assets with no organization. But otherwise, I think this is a really good change on that front as well. Now, when we look at this, this is actually a ginormous update. So there is a lot going on. Uh, if we start scrolling down, you'll see many, many things here. Uh, they just go on and on and on. So a lot of them are bug fixes, just tons and tons of bug fixes, which is fantastic. But let's start at the top on the things that actually matter, and I'll try to just hit on what's important, and then you can update and try it out or go through this readme yourself. So, the big thing is, this is, for whatever reason, 2024.14, and if we look at this, the last update was back in April, so it has been quite a while until they updated it, and I love roughly every, month, every other month until, yeah, okay, but... They're updating it and they're going to start changing the name here pretty soon. What they're working towards is the release of the new LTS, which is the long term stable. So that means that the new LTS is going to be 2024.14. Now they're getting ready for the new LTS and so they're looking for bug fixes and getting ready to do all of that. So that way that version becomes the new long term version. So what we're looking at and what we're interested in is, okay, welcome tab, great for newbies. Uh, readme is now on the load, which means that uh, notes in your project, you can see just right there. And so if you're making tutorials, if you're making stuff, that's fantastic. You can have readme notes that are just right there. And that's super useful if you're sharing projects. I love that. Um, we already showed the creating new projects doesn't add the empty assets, the group assets in there, which I think is a wise, great choice. Uh, it does say specifically, hey, uh, it's what it's doing is it's just not showing empty folders. It doesn't actually change anything. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can now actually have Feather uh, set the preferences properly. And so when you are creating initial asset names, it will start using your naming convention. So what that looks like is when you're in file preferences and you jump over to feathers specifically, if you're using it, you can come down to message severity, scroll down to GM 2017, which is the inconsistent naming, okay? You have to set this to ignore. Then under naming rules, it'll tell you that again, hey, you must set this to ignore for this to work. But now you can come in and you can actually set the naming convention for everything that you wanna do. This is really nice. So if I come in over here to objects, I use lower camel case, my prefix is OBJ. So now when I do this kind of stuff, it will actually remember this and it will start using this when it makes things for me, when it uh, auto-completes, when I'm making things like that. 
really helpful really nice in that regard i'm excited to see that um let's keep going down uh there's a lot of quality of life so dpi better dpi support uh fixed launching gm via your project so uh sometimes i ran into this if you clicked on a yyp file it would just launch into a blank screen. It would actually like load things, but it would be a blank screen. You'd have to close it and then open it again and then it would finally work. So that's nice. Uh, bug reporting changes. So they're trying to make it nicer and easier and faster, which I think is great. They've done fixes for code editor one and two. So personally, I've moved away from code editor one in my personal projects. I am all on code editor two. Um, they say, there's over 190 issues that they have fixed here. And if you want to see all of them, you click on this all issues button and it's going to walk you through and you can start scrolling through and looking at all of them. There's a lot going on. But the nice thing is it sounds like they have really revamped and picked this up. So if you're not using Code Editor 2, this is what it looks like where you can add events and you can actually kind of all see them in one scrolling view, which... I was hesitant when I first saw this, but it's actually so nice and so convenient. I don't typically use like this preview, but I use this to scroll through when I have a thousand lines of code in an object. They're all right here and I don't have to move between them. Super nice, super nice. So I'm excited that that's gonna be hopefully working significantly better because I've run into a problem or two that was game crashing or just game maker crashing because I couldn't use autocomplete syntax highlighting or anything inside of this code editor too because it ran into an error. So I'm hoping a lot of that is now fixed. Uh, debugger uh, is getting a little bit of love and update. So you have uh, a little bit of stuff here, but you've also got more stuff down here where they added the ability to do debugging with controllers now which i think is pretty nice we'll get to that later but that's pretty nice uh updating support for fonts and font editors uh this one here is a big one to me laptop mode now if i can i prefer not to work on a laptop but i teach to students on laptops and laptop mode is an absolute pain so removing this i am so excited okay Package Manager should be a lot more robust now. Same idea is just, hey, things should be working better. Uh, prefabs are getting a lot of love and already they seem to be working. Now, if you followed a video I made before, Prefabs is over here, this little prefab library window. I think is a really fantastic idea and now it actually seems to work properly. So I can come in here and over on the left, the inspector allows you to actually do more stuff. So I can alter things like the frames per second here. Uh, you can come in and check texture collision and even nine slice all from within here, which I think is pretty nice. So now you can actually change these things here and use them in your project. And then of course you can just right click and duplicate into projects and now it actually works. So before you had to restart your project the very first time you did this and now you don't. So that in and of itself, like this whole prefab, I think is the best change that they've made in a long time, especially for me as a teacher and a course maker, like being able to come in here and just have access to all of this right away is so nice. They've also made it so you can finally start using the UI panel stuff inside of here. So I'm going to take their word for it. I haven't used it yet, but this idea of being able to use these actual UI panels is very exciting because although I think UI panels has a long way to go before it's really useful and easy to use, it's definitely got potential. So the fact that they are getting that integrated into prefabs, fantastic. So... Here's fixes for saving and loading. Uh, room editor, okay? They've added some performance fixes. They've added a few UI layer changes. Uh, so when you come over to your room and you've got that UI layer section inside of here and then you start adding more. So you add uh, like a flex panel inside of here and then you add multiple flex panels. Uh, you can actually come into the flex panels now and you can actually resize them with a mouse. 
This is a small change, but should have been here from the beginning and so incredibly nice. Like just being able to, to change this with a mouse is truly a huge deal and something that they needed to have in here a long time ago. So that I think will help adoption at the very least. Uh, you've got the sound editor getting beefed up. So what that really looks like is the sound editor uh, main window itself hasn't changed. So let's go over here to sounds. What they've changed is over here in the inspector. So when we're looking at the inspector now, this is significantly nicer and beefed up and it, and it now flows much more naturally and easier to understand. If I were to bring this into my project, it doesn't actually change anything at all. This all, I believe, is exactly the same. But now you can actually adjust things in here and it will get adjusted properly. So that's really nice. So all of that is now significantly better and easier to use with the prefab library. So that's nice too. Uh, okay. Then we get into fixes and changes. Lots and lots of stuff here. Um, some of it might be important to you if you're using very specific or you've run into problems before. So come in here and take a look at that. Then you come down here to the changes to the run times, which this is a lot more of behind the scenes and making Game Maker work better, uh, which is great. Like adding this ability to have debug for controllers. Awesome. Good stuff. But it doesn't really change much of what we're doing here. Um, but yeah, there's that. They have added a few more functions. So if we scroll down, we can look and see. Um, they added two new measurement functions for UI layers. They've added some uh, console updates for like Android, GMX, HTML, PlayStation, Windows, all of that stuff. They've added more functions here. Uh, they're really kind of small, but hey, if you wanted to know if the application surface draw is enabled, there's now a function specifically for that. And a few more. They have also removed a few functions and changed some. So they deprecated the instance change and position change, which I never used anyway. Miscellaneous function changes are for things like array, delete, and push, and now it changes how they work. Game restart, matrix build. So like some of these things will be a little different. Uh, so make sure you, if you read or use any of these, make sure you come in here and look at them. And then they just have a list of, oh yeah, here's other things that we did that might affect you. So keep that in mind. And overall, that's going to be about it. Uh, there's no new big assets. There's no new huge changer, but a huge quality of life improvement. Um, there's still a few big things on the horizon. If you're not sure, you can always look at the roadmap over here. They have some pretty exciting things coming down the line. Uh, so this is where we're at right now, 2024.14. And then 2025 LTS is further there. And then future releases has more stuff like this. Um, so there's more things coming up. This is what we have right now. And overall, it's nice to get an update. Like I said, it's been since April that we had anything. And for whatever reason, we're still on 2024. Uh, the naming could definitely use some work, but I'm very happy that they are now updating it, showing some usability, some changes, and adding some life, which is fantastic. I think that making the prefab library now fully integrated and working properly is going to be huge. I really do think once they learn uh, how to make this just nice and simple to use, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good when you can start, when you can just grab a prefab uh, library or package and just go to town with it. It's going to be amazing. I'm very excited. But that's about it. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you learned something new or you saw something that you want to investigate more. And if so, go for it. As I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.